Good morning grade 12. Welcome to your first lesson in week 3. We are still looking at number patterns but today we are looking at the infinite series. Now what is an infinite series? An infinite series is one in which there is no last term. So for example if we are talking about an arithmetic series we are talking about the fact that it is going to go on and on and on forever. And in an arithmetic series the sum to infinity will result in a diverging series. So what does that mean? That means that the sum will either get infinitely big or infinitely small. So if you look at this example, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So if we had to keep adding these things, it would be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus what's the next one? 12 plus 14 plus 16. So you can understand that this number is going to get infinitely big, right? Or it could become infinitely small. So if we added minus 12 plus minus 10 plus minus 8 plus minus 6, we'll end up getting very, very close to minus infinity. So the arithmetic series, the result is always ends in, in, up in a diverging series. In other words, it doesn't come to a specific number. It actually just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But a geometric series, the sum to infinity will result in a converging series if your r, which is your common ratio, is between 1 and minus 1. In other words, if it's a fraction. If it's either a positive fraction or negative fraction, what will happen is that it will actually converge to a specific number. The sum will get closer and closer to a specific number. So for example, you've got 4, 2, 1, a half, a quarter. So let's just look at that as an example. Let me just write this down. If for example, we're over here, we've got 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus a half plus a quarter, if you add this, okay, 4 plus 2 is what? It's 6. Okay, plus 1 gives you 7, plus a half gives you 7 and a half, plus a quarter is going to give you 7 and 3 quarters. Now what's the next one? Half of a half is a quarter, half of a quarter is an eighth. So now if we go 7 and 3 quarters plus an eighth, it becomes, let's just do this, becomes 7 and 7 eighths, okay. If we now add 1 16th, because that's the next one, it becomes 7 and 7, 2 7 to 14 plus 1 15 sixteenths, okay. Plus 1 over 32, it becomes 7 and 15 times 2 is 30, 31 over 32. So do you see that it gets closer and closer and closer to 8? But it's never actually going to get to 8. And that means that it's converging. It's converging on 8. So if we had to say that if we carried on with this for ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever we would get as close as possible to 8. We never quite get to 8, but we get as close as possible to 8. Right, so the formula for the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r, where s infinity is the sum to infinity, obviously, because there's a little infinity sign. a is your first term and r is your common ratio. And remember your common ratio for sum to infinity has to be between 1 and minus 1. Right, so let's do a couple of examples. It says, what must x be for the series for this to converge? Now remember for a series to converge, your r has to be between 1 and minus 1. And how do you get r for a geometric series? Remember r is t2 over t1, which is also equal to t3 over t2. Now we only have to do one of those because they've told us this is a geometric series by saying that we needed to converge. So this is T1 and this is T2, right. So therefore if we look at it we've got R is going to be 3 times by 2x minus 1 all squared all over 3 over 2x minus 1. So we can cancel those, which is very nice, and we can cancel this and this. So we're left with an r is 2x minus 1. But now for this to converge, this has to be between 1 and minus 1. So let's see how we do that. We've got 2x minus 1 must be smaller than 1, but at the same time it must be bigger than minus 1. Now I want you to think about the fact that this is actually very easy to do. 
we will get a first look. Let me change the color. We're going to first look at this side of it. And what we're going to do is solve it like we would normally do. So what do we do? We take the 1 across. So we go minus 1 plus 1 is smaller than 2x, right? And then we're now going to look at that half of it. And if we look at that half, what would we do? We would take the 1 across as well. So we got 2x minus 1. Minus 1 goes to the other side, so it's 1 plus 1. So it becomes 1 plus 1. Okay, so then I'm just going to change back to the normal color. And we've got 2x is smaller than minus 1 plus 1 is 0. It's smaller than 2. And what do we do now? We divide both of these sides by 2. Because again, we're going to first look at this side. So we've got x is smaller than 0 divided by 2, which is just 0. And then we look at this side, and it becomes 2x. 2 divided by 2x is, I mean by 2 is 1. So therefore, for this to converge, your x has to be between 0 and 1. For this to converge, your x has to be between 0 and 1. Right, now it says, find the sum to infinity of the series 27 plus 9 plus 3. Okay, so first of all, sum, let's just write this down. Okay, let's do it over here. The sum to infinity equals a over 1 minus r. Now, a is easy. We've got it. It's 27. But now we need the r. So remember, your r is basically going to be um, t2. That's t1. That's t2. This is t3. So remember, it's t2 over t1, which is going to be 9 over 9 over 27 which is if you divide both of those by 9, you get 1 third. Therefore, our sum to infinity is equal to a, which is 27, divided by 1 minus a third, which is 27 divided by 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. And what do we do when we divide? We tip and times. So we've got 27 times by 3 divided by 2, and you pop out your calculator you got 27 times 3 equals divided by 2 equals, and it works out to be 40 and a half. Now remember what I said to you, this sum to infinity means that if we keep adding all these numbers, 27 plus 9 plus 3, and the next one's going to be 1, etc, etc, it's going to get close and close and close and close and close and closer to the final answer, but not quite so close enough that it will actually get to it, but it'll be so close that equivalently it'll be 40 and a half. Right. Let's do the last next one. It says the sum to infinity of a geometric series is 15. So the sum to infinity is, so the sum to infinity is 15, right? And it tells you that r is two thirds. R is two thirds. And they say determine the first three terms of the series. Okay, so we want a and the next series and the next one. So sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r. So we know that the sum to infinity is 15. We want a, and this is 1 minus 2 thirds. Okay, so therefore we've got a is going to be, what does this become? This becomes a third. So it's 15 times by a third. Therefore a is just 5. So we know that the r is 2 thirds, right? Yeah, 3, 15 divided by 3 is 5. Therefore, your A is 5. Your next one is going to be 5 times by 2 over 3, which is 5 times 2 is 10 over 3. And 10 over 3 is what? 10 over 3 is 3 and a third. The next term is going to be 10 over 3 times by 2 over 3 which becomes, if we write this down, it becomes 20 over 9 and 20 over 9 is going to be 1 and 2 ninths. So the first three terms are 5, 3 and a third and 1 and 2 ninths. 
Okay, I hope you understand what I've done is I've taken the first term, then I've taken the first term and multiplied by the common ratio, and I've got 10 over 3, which I wrote out nicely as 3 and a third. Then I took the second term and multiplied by the common ratio, and I ended up with your third term. So that is how to determine...